ones we have seem to look okay. <laughs> Computer's so wet, my mouth won't even work. Okay. Welcome to another episode of uh, Glass Case for Motion. I'm Ryan. I'm not having fun. No. I'm having more fun now, but I, was say, I am stuck in Texas. Is this, is this the uh, Groundhog Day episode of uh, um, Glass Case of Emotion? It's been Groundhog Day for like three days now, yeah. and currently we're running out of... I feel like I'm in quarantine. Well, what have you been doing? Yeah. I'm watching TV, playing video games... Uh, but you can only do so much that until you get like incredibly just over it right. and watching it rain in the freezing cold. Um, Torchies is not open, right? So what have you? Torchies been- is not open. So I, there's a lot of stuff across the street. I've been going to get like I had Whataburger uh, a couple of days ago on Monday. Uh, yesterday I had Chick-fil-A. Uh, the Chipotle is not open yet across the street, which is highly unfortunate because I was really looking forward to Chipotle. Um, I might go to Bucky's. Might go to Bucky's. You haven't been yet. Got. No, no, I've been, I've been uh, holding out, but I might go get like a burrito from Bucky's after this. Okay. What's your so. order at Whataburger. What do I get at Whataburger? Yeah. Uh, just their double cheeseburger, pretty plain. Uh, I like Whataburger. I like Whataburger more than I like In-N-Out. I said it. Uh, burgers are bigger. I feel like they're better. Their fries are better. Fries are better. Um, I'm not a big fan of In-N-Out fries. I'm yeah. be honest with you. And the spread they got In-N-Out. Not a fan. Um, when we were in Texas earlier this year, and I had Whataburger, they had an awesome like jalapeno ranch spread they put on. Yeah. And it's not there anymore. And I was really disappointed because it was soy good. And uh, not not there. So. That's that's done. So I just gotta eat a plain cheeseburger. But I like Whataburger. I like their good. spicy ketchups that they have. I do spicy enjoy ketchup. Yeah. I'm not a ketchup guy, so yeah, I've never had the spicy ketchup. But uh, goes well yeah. with the fries that they have. Yeah, yeah, that's good. I've never understood. Oh, never understood the whole. I mean, I, I guess it's the same. It's like me with uh, Bojangles. Everybody has their burger place that is where they're from. Like all the California folks are like In and Out is king. Texas is Whataburger. Um, Shake Shack people, I guess those exist. Oh, those exist. <laughs> Shake Shack is delicious. It is good. They're all good. They're all equally good in their own rights. Mm, it's just In and Out has has shit fries. Yeah, yeah. I'm not a fan. But I mean, I mean In and Out's milkshakes are okay, but yeah. they're not like nothing like Cookout. They're no McDonald's milkshake. I'll tell you that. No, <laughs> kidding, kidding, kidding. That mm-hmm. machine never works. So. Yeah, yeah. Just the lazy employee who doesn't yeah. want to make you a milkshake. Sorry, ice cream machine's broken. Somebody mapped out all of the uh, out of order McDonald's uh, ice cream machines in the U.S. So ridiculous. Is it just because they're hard to clean? Is that why the employees like don't want to do it? Because even the soft serve. Because the, the McDonald's that's on South Boulevard, I used to go to like back in the day a lot, and it was like broken every other day. Yeah, broken. I don't know. I mean, I've never tried to harvest ice cream from a machine so i couldn't tell you how easy they are to clean or not clean yeah i mean either. yeah don't have that experience viewers if you've ever had to clean an ice cream machine <laughs> let, let us know yeah we might get an answer to this i do think this is the first uh mid-race report we've had on glass case of emotion um no true because <laughs> yeah. Report. yeah yeah we're what 54 <laughs> laps in 52 52 two laps in uh Mid-race report update. Uh, uh, started tenth. I think we got to maybe sixth or seventh, and then we pitted, took four, and we had a loose left front wheel, so we had to come back in and pit. And we drove from the back to about thirteenth or fourteenth, and then we just took gas. And I think we were supposed to line up like sixth or seventh, and then it started raining. Yeah. Um, but the Dex Imaging Ford Mustang is. Uh, Pretty speedy. Just need to uh, need it to go here. Need to get rolling. What is the forecast? I haven't looked. I've been scared to look for this afternoon in Texas. So the bad thing about right the Texas thing right now is like there's a lot of mist. Mm. Um, that's what's been the problem the last couple of days. Monday, Tuesday, 
last night it looked like we had a little bit of a window about five o'clock here and they were getting a lane dry and then the mist came back and then it called everything. And today I got woken up by pouring rain. Ooh. And uh, so that was great. And then I think honestly, there's a little bit of a window. I think, I think the weather is supposed to clear up, not weather supposed to clear up, but it's supposed to stop being moist uh, around four today, central time. And maybe we can get rolling about six out here. Yeah. Possibly. I'm being optimistic, but tomorrow looks beautiful. Right. So we're racing tomorrow regardless, but maybe tonight. Um, it's just so cold. It's like 38 here right now. Ooh. It's made it really hard to, to get anything going. That was the thing there. Uh, we, um, uh have a video we we were talking about that earlier on nascar.com jonathan merriman was about just the fact that track drying right now it takes what three hours with the weather the like with the temperature like when you don't have heat in the track and there's no heat it's harder to dry it so it just takes longer to dry with the coldness so it's just it sucks and they're doing everything that they can to try and get it in i mean at least it's race day only shows so like it's not like you're rolling into martinsville not that they would have postponed it this long texas like having to like do practice yeah get there that's true that's true well but, and that uh, that's the other thing that we were discussing yesterday do you know what the longest rain delay in nascar history is it was like two weeks where a race got started and then had to finish I feel like I know the answer to this, but I can't think of it, and you're going to say it. I'm going to be like, damn it. So it's 1973 Bristol. The race started on March 11th after 51 laps. The race was red flag for rain. The following Sunday, they raced at Rockingham, then came back to Bristol on the 25th and completed the race. Cale Yarbrough led all 500 laps and won by two laps over Richard Mm. Petty. Yeah, I saw that on Twitter. Yeah. Uh could you imagine if someone won by two laps these days? I know. Especially, how frustrated would you be if you were on a rain delay like that and tried to race like consecutive days only for somebody to win by two laps? Yeah. Yeah. Um, that's not going to happen in this day and age. But, uh, yeah, fans would be going insane on Twitter. He's cheating. They're cheating. Nash- Raiders. We've been out to look at the fans – bitching and moaning on Twitter this week was with the rain delay. It's like, what do you want us to do? It's like, it's raining. I don't, you cannot control the weather. Uh, fans always bitch about something. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it's been driving me up a wall. I haven't even looked because people are always think they're smarter than the weather. Oh, why don't they just build a dome or get tarps out? Uh, like baseball. My but. favorite was Ryan McGee, like tweeted something to Bob like all these questions in a row in one sentence. Cause I guess everybody just like will not leave Parker alone about like, well, how long does it take to drive a track? And what if the moisture temperature or percentage is this and that and that poor Bob. Mm. Yeah. And Bob isn't here. No, he's not even there. Like, that's, that's the thing. He's getting his information from like other tweets that people from here. And so I don't know what's worse having to keep up with it that closely. If you're not there, because you're basically like glued to your screen. It's not fun. That's what Stricker or and I have been doing. Be there and have it just kind of be like easier to write about and keep track of because you're there. I, don't know. I mean, if I was if I was here or even a reporter in general, I'd say it's raining, and then I wouldn't put out any other tweets until it's done raining. Yeah. If I haven't said anything, it's still raining. It's still raining. And then if it's like, all right, it stopped raining, we're drying, that would be it. Like, that's yeah. how you got to do it. But, yeah, I sometimes feel bad for Pachris. He gets bombarded with all these people asking questions. Yeah. If I was him, I just would be, like, not answering them because it's, like, the same shit. Does Texas have lights? <laughs> what if you put tarps on a cannon and you shot them out from the infield and they went over the track and they'd cover the track to uh, – to yeah. create a no nah. people think it's like baseball like they just could put a tarp out here and cover the track that's a lot of tarp dog like i you could maybe 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 
do that at a Martinsville or a Bristol? Yeah, maybe. Maybe. Possibly. Possibly. Yeah. But there's no way in hell at a mile and a half or a super speedway like Nothing Talladega or Daytona. That's like, a small, that's like a small town. Yeah. Like talking a small town. Yeah. It's a lot of tarp. It's a lot of fabric. Yes. I don't want to know the price per square foot on that. Build a giant umbrella. Yeah. Put a dome Open. over it. Yeah. Where's that vortex? <laughs> the vortex. <laughs> the vortex that, theory. I will say, though, like, I have been sitting in this chair for the past, what, two, three days now, almost, with our uh, live clipping, highlight clipping tool open mm -hmm. in a small window over here with, like, Twitter open and just, like, watching the same stretch of track, like, get dry, and then the jet dry goes by, and then it slowly just, like, covers back up. So it's, that's what, and, and we also have up the... Uh, officials the tower um from the nascar app because it's still in a live state because the race is still going on so you can access the scanner oh. for the officials and listen to that <laughs> so you know where the elgin's heading yeah um, i just hope if we do not get the race in tonight that we start at like 9 a.m tomorrow local time I'm for if it. we have to wait until two o'clock to start this race that's going to be bonkers. Yeah. Because the weather's supposed to be great tomorrow. I would enjoy watching the race while I eat breakfast. That's why I love Monica so much. Mm -hmm. Breakfast and racing. Yeah. When, if we're going to wait and sit around and TV makes us wait till 2 o'clock to put this race on when everyone's been sitting here for four days, at this I'm going to write a letter. <laughs> <laughs> a strongly worded email to uh, Bob NBC. The, the yeah, the NBC yeah. support hotline. <laughs> Like, well, yo. I mean, tomorrow, there's no other... And today, there's no other sports on. Yeah. No, there's no other sports. World Series ended last yeah. night. Yeah. And, yeah, there'd be no... There's literally no... Well, what's tomorrow? Thursday? Thursday. You we got, should get it in early because Thursday night football. And it's the Panthers. Oh, yeah. Exactly. yeah. Bro. It's even more extended to get it in early. Yeah, <laughs> the, pa the Panthers-Falcons, which arguably, like, that's, like, a lot of our... Fans, that's a lot of the yeah. South right there. Yeah, and it could be Christian McCaffrey's return to uh, the, I, the the football I don't field. Think it's gonna be. I don't either. I think it, like they're doing all right with him not in there. Don't rush him back. Let him get. Yeah, fully I think healthy. he's got one more week. Plus, yeah. it's gonna be like rainy tomorrow. So imagine like a a high ankle sprain. He freshly healed on like yeah. soggy grass. And they're playing the Falcons. I mean, we don't really need them. Yeah, the Falcons suck this Although, year. Although, watch them. be up by 30, and they'll come back. But they'll find a way to beat the Panthers. That's just, like... Yeah. That, because I'm Panthers that. went down there and beat them in Atlanta for the first time in I don't know how many years. They're going to find a way to win. Either the Panthers are going to win, or the Falcons are going to win by, like, 20. Yeah. It's either or. I would love for the Falcons to go up by, like, 30, and then blow that lead. I know. It would be so great. <laughs> Sorry so to all of you Atlanta hard. fans out there, but I'm not sorry. Sorry, Atlanta. Yeah. Yeah. Are they? Would you consider them one of the more hated teams in the NFL? No. Like, I, would, I don't think so. I would. I'm trying to think of like the most hated teams in the NFL. Pittsburgh well, it used to be the Patriots. Dallas. I don't. I've never liked the Ravens for some reason. Um, I don't like Dallas. Yeah, but a lot of people do. America's team. America. America. They're having a rough year. Yes, they are. Was it the Dallas coach did you see during that press conference that got Tabasco in his eye? But then he wouldn't say what he was eating. Yeah. Like he was asked, like, well, what did you have? That, what, what were you putting hot sauce on? And he was like, refused to, t to say. Mm -hmm. Salad. Good. I think it was either something weird or he was actually crying about their season. He was just eating straight Tabasco sauce. Maybe. He was just spoonfuls. Turning up. Maybe he was embarrassed because if you're eating Tabasco in the state of Texas, I don't know. I feel like there's better hot sauces. Yeah. Well, whoa, whoa, was it Mike McCarthy or was it another coach? It's like a, It was a position coach. Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. I was about to say, yeah. he's, he's, he's a Wisconsin guy, so he doesn't know a lot of hot sauces. Yeah. No, it was, uh, <laughs> no, it was cheeses. Like a special team. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. 
Um, can I can I say that a couple weeks ago we had uh, one of your Team Penske teammates on here, Austin Sendrick, mm. and he's restoring that old Volvo. And I replaced the headlamp on my Volvo yesterday. That whoever designed the engine compartment on an 07 Volvo station wagon is a sadist. Why? Because where the headlamps are, there's like this much room hmm. to get so your you hand in. Hands? I couldn't see. So I'm like getting my oh. hands in there blind. So I had to like get one finger in there and then like use these to like turn it to get it out. And I don't even know if I got it in there right, but it's in the hole. So we'll see. Mm-hmm. But I Life's just see it. Yeah. Got it in the hole. Life's good. Um, I can see at night now. But oh, that's good. I want to lodge a complaint because it's not easy yeah, to get these in and out. You're going to need that because it gets dark at like 4 p.m. starting this weekend. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Mm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I forgot. It changes on Sunday. Yeah. It changes the day of Martinsville. That's really going to screw me up. But that, like, I hate races that happen on changing times because you're like, should I be there this time? Do I want to make sure? Let's get there a little bit early, you know? Yeah. yeah, luckily this time change. If you're on time, you're you would be early. Yeah, as opposed to spring forward. Yes, that's good. But um, hmm. I've been having weird dreams in Texas. Yeah, weird. About, like about uh, rain and water. I had a, no, no, no water. I had a dream last night. I felt like we were at New Hampshire, and. I was sitting in the infield and watching the cup cars race, but I wasn't in it. What? And then all of a sudden someone was like, where are you at? We're racing. They had like a replacement driver for me. So they told me to haul ass to the trailer to get my stuff on. I couldn't run. I felt like I had concrete in my shoes. So I like struggled to get there. And then I got all my stuff on, took me forever, walked out. And then they're like, no, you know what? You're fired. We don't need you anymore. Oh, like, wow. What? Yeah, and then I woke up. Jeez. I wonder what a dream interpreter, if we have a dream interpreter as a fan, would say about that, what the hidden meaning is. <sighs> Anxiety, I'm sure, of some sort. I think as the resident glass hole with glasses, um, I'm going to take them off and, and kind of go like this and give my interpretation that it's the uh, fear that you might have slept in and missed the race at Texas okay. because you're, you're in this delay. So, Wouldn't that be a bitch? Yeah. Sit here for four days and you sleep <laughs> in and you're late? Yeah. I always have fear. I think that's a lot of drivers' fears, uh, like sleeping in or missing, like, the plane or missing the race. Like, I think that's a ton of drivers' fears. I've, I've had, like, nightmares of, yeah, missing practice. Oof. Like, not even being at the racetrack. Like, forgetting it's practice. Yeah. That would be an interesting study to see what, NASCAR drivers, like, what the common dream was. Because, like, mm. people, yeah. like, will, like, the whole, like, teeth falling out thing. Yeah. There's, like, recurring dreams that, you're, like, being naked in front of a crowd or something like that. Like, is there a specific type of dream that a lot of drivers have? I don't know. A good study. That would be a good study. You could probably get a PhD in that. Yeah. Dream interpreters, in general, I think it's all BS. How do you know what I'm dreaming about? You know, or how do you know what the meaning is? Like, no one knows. I, yeah, no one it sounds knows like what somebody just had to, like, guess or, like, put two and two together, like, oh, this person is stressed, and they had a dream about this. So, like, assuming that yeah. that's what it means. Yeah. I mean, I'm pretty sure I had a dream that was, like, the death of my childhood at one point, where, like, I went into the house that I grew up in, but, like, when I went inside, it was, like, an old... Like, outside it looked normal and fine, but you go inside and it was, like, a decrepit house with, like, like a haunted house-looking thing. And there was, like, a little dead ghost child in one of the rooms. And I thought I heard my dad's voice in another room. And it turns out it was my voice. And then I went in there and there was the dead child in there again. And then I woke up. So that sort of, to me, symbolizes, you know. That you may have taken psychedelics? No, I'm completely sober. Um, (laughs) That's what that sounds like. It'd make a good, like, movie, too. Like, you know, you just translate that into a film. Yeah. That reminded me of that description of uh, Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind. You know, where they're in the house in Montauk, and it's, like, disappearing as they're yeah. in it. Yeah. 
weird Scared stuff. <laughs> See ya. See you later. He was afraid that they might uh, start racing, so he had to go. He had to go. Yeah, we're starting. <laughs> Get out of here. Drivers to your they, car. At least they set a time today that was like later instead of being like, oh, we're going to try it 10. And you're just like basically on call for like four hours. Yeah. That's, well, yeah. I mean, pretty I much. If they knew it wasn't going to. Oh, some yogurt? I flavor? harvest peach. Big YoPlay fan. Um, if anyone from YoPlay is watching, I would love to represent your brand <laughs> with pride. Who would have guessed? Ryan loves mm. yogurt and salads. I love yogurt. It's one of my favorite things in the world. Um, and the Harvest Peach is great. I love peaches. And they do a good job. I feel like yogurt is a... Um, Hotly debated food. I don't know that everybody loves yogurt. Do you eat chew yogurt? No, you just kind of like, like you would eat soup, where it's kind of like a, you maybe like toss it around in the mouth a little bit before you swallow. You, you tongue it. I chew. I chew. Oh, well, there's I, a little tiny peach. I, I will say, when I make yogurt, I usually put stuff like toppings, like granola or like blueberries. So, yeah, I'm chewing because there's, Solid foods yeah. in my yogurt. Like, I can't remember the last time I just had yogurt. Without, yeah, I guess has a little tiny not piece. Not any, like, mixed in or on the t- stuff on the top. Yeah. Yeah. What is yogurt? It's crazy. How do they make it? They cur- curdle cheese dairies <laughs> products? <laughs> is it cheese? It's dairy. It's a milk. No, it's yeah, dairy. it's in the milk. Yeah. But it's some sort of, I don't know if it's fermented. I know it has probiotics, so that means there's some sort of growth bacteria. This has a lot of sugar in it. Activation happening. You got to get the low sugar kind. Or the Greek yogurt. No, that's no fun. Or the Greek. The Greek yogurt no, with some like fruits Greek. in it. I like Yoplait. Yeah. I think yogurt is the Greek version. Grade A reduced fat milk, sugar, peaches, modified cornstarch. That's good for you. Water, kosher gelatin, mm. and then a bunch of other shit. So basically, yeah. you heat it up. You heat up the milk to a temperature that uh, denaturates its proteins, and then um, you cool it at a temperature that will not kill the microorganisms that turn it the milk yeah. into yogurt. So okay, I'm gonna test y'all's minds. I just learned this. I had no idea. Do um, you know where Yoplait is based? You know where it's from. Um, let's see. I'm, I feel like I need a clue. Like, you, like, give me a territory. It's, East Coast, West Coast, South, Midwest. It's not America. Oh. Yo play, yo play, yo play. Um, I'm going to say some, somewhere in Germany. Belgium. Couple guesses. France. You were pretty close. Parlez-vous français? France. Yeah. France, ah. France, we come Yo from play France. Yoplait is a registered trademark of Yoplait Marques, France. I was going to guess France, but I felt like that would have been the obvious answer, and I didn't think it was going to be obvious. Two on the yeah, nose. I had no idea. Based on the pronunciation and spelling, I would have guessed France, but... If it was Yoplait, I'd say, like... Yoplait? Yoplait. Yeah. That'd be North Carolina. North Carolina. Yeah, Yoplait. <laughs> Yoplait, it's from Greensboro. That Yoplait... That's good. Speaking, well, you. speaking of delicious sugary uh, things, um, I think now is the time in the podcast where, I, you know, I got to say that this part of the broadcast is brought to you by Sugarland's Moonshine. And if you go to sugarlandshine.com forward slash NASCAR, you can sign up for the Sips Up To You Challenge because there's still some days left. It ends on the 15th of November. And you can go to uh, sugarlands.com forward slash NASCAR to sign up, uh, view the rules, all of that stuff, and they're uh, giving away prizes, uh, NASCAR prize packs, Sugarland Shine prize packs, every day. So I would like to give a shout out to Sugarland. Sugar uh, they sent us uh, some some swag, but I have to say, so I've been using old yearbooks to like put my laptop on the right yeah uh, height for all my zooms. Well, the box oh that they sent us is the perfect height. For my Zooms, so instead of stacking, like, 
five or six yearbooks. I just use the Sugarlands Distilling Company nice. Appalachian Sip and Cream box. So thank you. I have been using the Sip and Cream to sip. Must be nice. I got a couple. Talladega gave me some Sugarland Shine a couple weeks ago. And it's in my bus. Yeah. But I haven't been able to drink any of it because I don't know when we're racing. Because <laughs> I don't want to drink the day before a race. Right. So I'm like, I can't. So. <laughs> it's like I'm just sitting here, stone cold sober. Stone cold sober. Waiting. Just, have, just oh. stocking it up on body armor. I'm so hydrated <laughs> right now. It's unbelievable. I could go. I could go kill a lion. I'm how su- hydrated. I am. I'm surprised you haven't had to get up and like go pee during the show yet. Or are you just like already like in race mode where you're just like peeing in the seat? I just went to the bathroom right before I called it. Okay. Okay. To make sure that I didn't have to. Yeah. Um, you know, that's good. That's only get up for yogurt. Yeah. <laughs> what are the drivers doing that don't have buses? Are they just sitting in their cars all day? Yeah. 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 They're just sitting in their cars all day. I mean, you know, drivers, spotters, you know, they just been sitting in their cars. Yeah. Oh, but, but at least like today with a later start time, you know, they haven't had to be here yeah. all day. Plus well, like tech, if you're going to be stuck somewhere, even though it's a pandemic and you can't really like go out or like sightsee, Texas is not a bad place to be stuck. Like the food there is good. Usually <laughs> the weather is not terrible in this case it is, but I don't know if I got to be stuck somewhere. Texas is not a bad place. Do you think there are any drivers that might have a little bit snugger of a fire suit compared to Sunday? Like when oh, they tr- for sure. <laughs> like they've been eating, they've been eating all in and out all week. Eating. Yeah, yeah. All I've been doing is eating. Like I'm after this podcast, I'm gonna go get lunch. I just don't know what I want to get yet. <laughs> like I said, I'll probably go to Bucky's and like walk around and just try to get some beef jerky. Yeah, some beef jerky. Uh, I got some beef jerky from there before. It was really good. Yeah, I'm, uh, Bucky's is, and they're coming to North Carolina. They're gonna be here uh, outside yeah. of Raleigh. Raleigh, that's too far. Yeah, but it's the first like foothold in North Carolina. So then, over time, yeah. you'll take hold and spread. Yeah, yeah. I'm surprised they go to Raleigh first instead of like Charlotte. I think it's on forty, and I think uh, forty is more of that like interstate. Yeah, you're back gonna, and forth. Yeah. You're going to no. hit more people than you would on 77. Yeah, that's true. But 85, 85. yeah, 85 would yeah. be a good one. Yeah. They're building the Top Golf right by the IKEA, right by the um, uh, college, UNCC. I still have never been to a Top Golf. They're fun. They're so fun. I've heard. The Vegas one is a lot Uh-oh, of fun. Oh, you guys froze up. Oh, oh there you back. We're back. Cool. The <laughs> Vegas one is a lot of fun. Um, because they got the huge TVs out there, and then the TVs in the bay, like it's it's like over the top top where, golf. Where is the Vegas one? Like not on the, it's not near the strip. It's strip adjacent. By the Hard Rock, isn't it? I think so. It's by the Hard. Yeah. Um, no, I can I can I can get right to it. Like I know exactly where it is. Yeah. I just can't remember the names of the streets. Um, it's like behind the link, the little. The uh, Ferris, wheel. Ferris wheel thing with the pods. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. We drove by the, uh, I don't know if we talked about it. I drove by the Raiders Stadium. Oh. A handful of weeks ago, and it was like the first time it was done. Yeah. And it's awesome. Freaking awesome. I just don't know how much money they spend a year to clean that damn thing with it being all black. Oof. Like, it's got to be nuts with all the sand and stuff out there. Vegas is kind of dusty, like yeah, desert. Yeah, they're gonna. It's, it's beautiful though, awesome place. Well, between that and what is it, the SoFi Stadium in LA? Mm-hmm. Like those, like the new stadiums that are coming out in the NFL are just like massive, insane. Yeah. Do you think they'll ever end up? Moving the Panther Stadium to like closer to where the practice facilities are, like in South Carolina. I hope not. I don't think so. I think the fact that the Charlotte Pipe Company moved out, Pipe and Foundry, Pipe and Foundry, the fact that they moved out opens up all of that land to build that entertainment district up there that Tepper wants to build. Oh, um, yeah. 
Like, I think he sees the value in having a team for game day being in a center city area because that's yeah. where everything's – that's the hub now. So you want yeah. Yeah. that there. And the soccer team will play up there. You've got the baseball stadium that, you know, there's always those rumors that we might get an MLB team at some point. That would be awesome. That would be cool. If you could pick – it, well, I mean, we've you know we've got basketball, we've got football, we've got uh, minor league, baseball. minor league baseball, and we've we've obviously got NASCAR. Is, is there a sport that you would like to see in Charlotte that we don't have? Um, I think having a major league baseball team would be really cool. I mean, yeah, the Knights are awesome, but yeah, if you brought like a major league baseball team there, I think that'd be super cool. Or a hockey team. Left. Oh yeah. Hockey's fun. Yeah. I think it would be. It doesn't matter. It just is more the quality of the team for me. Like, yeah. I don't care. Give me a team, but a team that's going to be in the playoffs. Like, I think that's more important than the sport is the fact that if they're a good team that makes the playoffs, that's better for the city than whatever sport it is. Yeah. I think it would be cool if, like, baseball took on the English Premier League and the soccer model of relegation. To where if you're a top performing team in the minor leagues, you bump up to like the top three teams in each league bump up to the next level. Um, so if you're minor league, you could bump up to uh, the MLB and then just play there and then maybe work your way up. Um, but if you're the lowest three teams, then you drop down a league. Hmm. Fair. Hmm. I didn't know that's how they did it. Yeah, yeah. That's uh relegation it's fun to watch in soccer because like teams are fighting to not be the last three right so they're scrapping and clawing at the end of the season so they don't get relic because you lose money you lose sponsorship if you go down but then you can gain it back if you win the championship and move back up so makes sense i think it'd be cool to do that with baseball i mean we're already way too entrenched with it we could never do it but you can always dream can't you yeah Stranger things have happened. You never know. Yes. Stranger things have happened. Um, yeah. I keep clicking on Twitter because um, when we're recording this, news hasn't happened, but news could happen. Um, so just hot reaction, hot take, hot take. Uh, the five coming back into NASCAR with Hendrick. Crazy. With uh, Kyle Larson. So we're getting rid of the 88. Getting rid of the 88. Kyle Larson behind the wheel of the five. It's weird yeah. that the 88 is not going to be there. But I kind of associated the 88 with Dale anyway, yeah. more so than Alex. So, sorry, it, Alex. It'll be back at some point. Somebody will bring the 88 back at some point. You okay. think? Numbers come and go. Like, no, like, you know, the five was gone for a while. Casey Kane was the last person to have the five. Yeah. Now the five's back. Um, you know, the five yeah. was that original car for Hendrick, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, I think they should bring the 25 back and retire the 48. Yes. That would be cool. Yeah. They should have retired the 48 once J- – no offense. I mean, Jimmy is the 48. Yeah. So. I mean, you could make the same argument. I know Jimmy has more championships than Jeff, but the 24, to me, is still Gordon. Yeah. Yeah. You could have just gotten a whole new numbers over there. <laughs> But at the end of the day, you know, I mean, it's a, it's Hendrick's number. Right. It's Hendrick's right. numbers. I mean, yeah, you associate them with a driver, but at the end of the day, that's that's Rick's numbers. Yeah. Um, so he can pretty much, you know, you associate that team with those numbers too. Yeah. Well, it's like the three. You know, now I do associate the three with Austin Dillon. I mean, obviously yeah. the iconic three is still Earnhardt, but when I see the three, my initial reaction is – Dylan, and that's probably because it's day to day, you know. Yeah. We're in the yes. sport working in it, but. But that was big news. Mm-hmm. Making his return. Yep, 2021. So, once we're back from, because we're almost done with the season, so 2021 is right Crazy. around the corner. <laughs> yeah, we only. They collectively have like the youngest group now. Would you say? Is Chase, Kyle, Byron, and. Bowman. Yeah, they definitely got a young team. Youngins. Yeah, I didn't think of that. Very young. Like, there's no, like, every other team has, like, one guy in there that's, like, 
a little bit older at least. Yeah. Yeah, they got the youngest crowd. Longevity. Yeah. And, like, I don't think of Pinsky as being that old, but then, like, Brad is, what, 30? 30, like, 35 or four? 6. Four. Five. Like, mid-30s. Yeah. Which is not old, but compared to and Joey's the age of Hendrick. been around forever. <laughs> yeah. He just seems older because he's been around since he was, what, 18 in the Cup Series? Yeah. 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 But, yeah, it's uh. That's 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 big news. Yeah, yeah. Big news. Just came in. Breaking. The five car. Oh, I, I saw an interview with Bubba in Texas where he was like, somebody said something about the twenty three car, and he was like, "How do you know it's twenty three? Hmm. I want to give like a that's come on, man. Yeah, like terrible that's... bluffer. Never play black yeah. yeah. <laughs> or poker. How was your, your golf game? I saw he was tweeting about you guys playing golf yesterday. We ended up 2-2. Yeah. Um, yeah, we've been playing a 2K21 yeah. PGA Tour. It's pretty incredible. Um, and, yeah, I, he won the first one. I won the second one. He won the third. I won the fourth. So, and there's an asterisk next to the third game I lost, though, because he was, he was ahead by three or four strokes, but we were only on, like, the eighth hole, and the game glitched out, and we had a – get to a new one so he says he won that one but you know and he was ahead by a lot <laughs> but hey i mean yeah. if the game if the console had to get restarted doesn't count yeah but it's like when you accidentally knock over a game board when you're getting beat yeah oh shit sorry oh whoops i was gonna say were you guys in the same area or were you playing over uh internet we were in my bus <laughs> okay because i was yeah. gonna say I know, like, playing NCAA football back in the day, like, somebody would always get mad and, like, quit the game. It's like... No. No, we were just playing the same bus. Okay. PGA 21 is not, unfortunately, it's not cross-platform. I play PlayStation, Bubba has Xbox. Ah. Oh. Um, which is very unfortunate. It's not cross-platform. But, uh, but yeah, so he just came over and played. And I'll go over to his bus and play, because it's different on each controller, you know, right. the way you're swinging. The controllers are shaped different, so it's a little bit tricky. So we have to play on each other. You know, it's like a home game, right? Away game, all that stuff. It's like it's, just, it's a full-on tournament. You're playing uh, yeah. different conditions. You know, it's, yeah. it's raining one day, and then you know you got sunny the other. Yeah. And I've been playing Among Us. Have you guys ever played Among Us? No, I've heard that. things. I've heard good things. It's a lot of fun. Um, I just got introduced to it like last week, and pretty much the concept. I just play on my phone, but you can play on anything. Um, and it's a lot more fun when you have all your buddies and you're all chatting with each other. Yeah. Like a big group voice chat. So it's like 10 people max and you're on this spaceship and then you can either have one or two or even three imposters. Right. And like the rest of the people are the crew. And so the crew, you got to run around and get these tasks done. You have like four tasks you have to do to try to, and you all have to get those done before the imposter or imposters kill everybody. But, so, like, the boss, you can go kill somebody, and then, like, if you find the dead body, you can call an emergency meeting, and then you guys have to figure out who you think the imposter is and vote him off. So, but it's, like, some, so it's, like, a big deception game. Kind of like Clue? It's almost like Clue. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Thanks. It's a lot of fun, though, but it'll ruin friendships <laughs> because you're, like, pleading your case. Like, I'm not him. And they're like, I, you were acting sketchy. And they'll vote you off, and then you weren't him, and you're like, yeah, I told you guys, I'm not friends with you anymore. But it's a lot of fun. I've just gotten into it. It's, it's a good time. I've heard speaking I've heard of, things. Speaking of space, do you see where they found water on the moon? We landed on the moon? No. Oh, I, I, know, I, know, water. I know, I know, I know. Oh. Yeah, no. Colonies. Space colonies. And we're going back to the moon by, what, 2024 is when they want to get back to the moon? No, I think that's when they're sending the first female to the moon. So that, but is that in the first trip back to the moon when they send the first female? Because I feel like we need, I mean, I don't know. We got to go back to the moon. Somebody's got to go back. Somebody's got to be the first one back to go check. Somebody's got to go back. Take we got to get that water sample. Yeah. You got to get a straw and just make sure that uh, the water. Drink it. Yeah. Yeah. Take your home. Though. It was weird because we did not know there was water on the moon. I, that's what that's I wonder. Like for all the things that we explore and research how do they only figure that out now yeah we went to the moon what 50 years ago but we weren't looking for water on the moon back then 
You would think <laughs> every single time. <laughs> Guys, you see any water? We need some water. Got to find water on the moon. Where was the water? Was it just sitting above in a crater or was it underground? It was no, in I a, think it was underground. I think it was in a crater. Oh, was it? I think one of the theories was, and this is from watching uh, uh, NBC Nightly News, um, is that it was in a crater on the more sunny side, and they think that it was actually like droplets from... So it had been evaporated beforehand? But like... So it only like whatever, whatever condensated recently? What was it? Uh, ice uh, in frozen puddles or frozen beads mixed in with... Uh, so yeah, there's there's water matter on there. It's just, it's it was ice. Hmm. So the ice melted. I'm not a scientist. Global warming. Yeah. Moon yeah. warming. <laughs> Mo- lunar warming. Lunar warming. Our ice caps are melting on the moon. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah, but frozen the space molecules. Polar bears got nowhere to live. I just wonder what the damn like moon bases are going to look like. And I don't, I just like, they say there's water on the moon. I don't think it's, I guess you got to go back to figure it out, but like, how's that going to be enough to supply a colony? I mean, I'm going to be honest with you. All of us are going to be dead by the time there's moon bases. Yeah. I mean, when they colonize the moon, we will be long gone. Yeah. Yeah. I'm fine with that. Like, there's no way that they're going to get this done by the time that we are all dead. I know, though. Advances in, med- in, in modern medical technology and, uh, you know, our current level of income. You know, they're not even going back to the moon for another four years. I mean, how are they going to start building shit up there? Yeah. We have enough stuff to do down here. Yeah, we got plenty of stuff to worry about. The ocean. We could explore the ocean more. Whoa, we could explore the ocean. The ocean is terrible. What kind of fish are down here? <laughs> We really could, important we find this fish a mile down in the ocean. It's really going to help. <laughs> Do something. What if the aliens yeah. are? What if the aliens are actually in the bottom of the ocean? You mean the aliens are megalodons? Yeah, like <laughs> giant what if ass sharks. The aliens are. They're actually they instead of like being terrestrial, they went into the ocean, and we don't even know. Ah. It's a good idea. I still say maybe all the maybe all the all the ocean life that you see, all the uh, fish and everything, they're just aliens, and they think they they you know we think that they're stupid little fish, but and in, in reality they're really smart aliens. They're collecting data on us. Whenever they get captured by us, they're like, all right, we we learn about these people. We know, and they go report back, and then they start yeah. walking on land, and they they're like, we could do this the whole time. Or their cameras. Their fish are just robots. Well, you know, birds aren't real. But they're made of flesh, so whenever they catch us, they get all our information. And they store it in a big database, and they're spying on us. <laughs> so the, the ocean water is actually the database? Is it like a physical database? Maybe. No, they have bases at the bottom of the sea. Oh, okay. Maybe okay. <laughs> no, like, we just don't have the technology to detect that. You right. never know. Aquaman's yeah. down there... Uh, Singing to the fish and figuring all their stuff out, and mermaids and mermen. Yeah. Aquaman. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know, man. I don't know. I still maintain that aliens are just us, evolved us, and time travelers. That's my theory. <laughs> we I have, think we're all like a big snow globe under a in a collection of some massive alien on the back of a turtle. A mess, yeah, when it snows really hard and blizzards, he just shakes the globe a little bit and dumps it over and. Yeah. yeah, I mean, we're test subjects. There is the argument that we just live in a simulation. Yeah, that we are just a computer simulation. The Matrix. Yeah, yeah, could be. But if you know that you're the simulation, are you still the simulation? Like, if if you have the conscious thought, then are you actually? That's some Westworld shit right there. <laughs> well, then you become self-aware, and then you'd have to probably get terminated if you realize that you were a simulation. I don't know. Well, maybe that's what's going this on. This is a simulation, and whoever's listening, clear this shitty weather up in Texas <laughs> so we can go race some place. Just put it, push a button. Charlotte, too. It's shitty here today. Change yeah. that. I don't want to hear nothing about no shitty weather I, in Charlotte. I know. I know. <laughs> I've been stuck on a bus for four damn days. <laughs> I haven't even looked at the Martinsville weather. It's supposed to be nice. Like, Did Good. you have extra clothes on the bus? Yeah, I got some clothes. Okay. I, I keep I keep a couple, two, three days worth of clothes on here. Both winter and summer weather? Yeah, jackets and stuff and 
I mainly kept clothes on here before when we were here for yeah the weekends right for Probably. days because I wouldn't pack a suitcase. You just bring a backpack and yeah. have your clothes in here. But uh, yeah, makes sense. Uh, I have I have clothes. So, but a lot of bad thing is like a lot of the crew guys had to go buy clothes because right. like they weren't planning on being here for multiple days and like not this cold. So a lot of guys had to go out and buy winter clothes and stuff. Yikes. But which sucks. <laughs> How many people are walking around the track now with Bucky's sweatshirts? I bet a ton. I bet Bucky's business is just going through the roof right now. Bucky's is booming, brother. Bucky's yeah. is booming. Booming, booming, booming. I don't know. Um, All this Bucky's talk got me. Yeah, craving Bucky's now. It's getting to be lunchtime. Um, so when we get to Martinsville, thoughts on Martinsville on the paperclip? Can ultimate right? race. Yeah. Which is weird to say, because we're so used to saying Phoenix is the penultimate. Two and two thirds left of the of the yeah. season. <laughs> yeah, two races two left. Thirds. Yeah, Martinsville. I mean, it's going to be interesting. You know, there'll be a lot of there will be four guys outside of the playoff picture looking in that need to get in. A lot of them will need wins. Um, and Martinsville is going to be wild. I think you know you look at uh, the nineteen is sitting in a pretty bad spot right now, and he's he won Martinsville earlier this year. So, you know, that could be a wild card. Um, so, yeah, I think there's going to be be pretty pretty intense. Uh, it'll end the, under the lights like it did last year and like it did this year, so that'll be, uh, be really neat. Um, no, I think it's going to be great. It's a shame we don't have a lot of fans there for the first, you know, time Martinsville is going to be in that, you know, that important of a race. I don't know. That's one of the ones that, like, I'm really upset that I'm not going to be at Martinsville. I'm missing the hot yeah. dogs. I'm gonna, I'm gonna fix a hot dog. I think Sunday and uh, watch. I the wonder race. if the hot dog stand will even be open for the people that are at track. Because I could see, no. arguably, it wouldn't be. No, it wasn't. It wasn't open um, when we were there before. Yeah. Uh, Is, are, yeah they, are they? Are they having any fans there? I don't know. I think I think so because I got a text today from NASCAR for uh, like your plus one. Yeah, because I think <sighs> so. Whenever they do that, they have some fans. Yeah. So I want to say Virginia has like, and it's a very neglig not negligible. Nothing's neg like any fans there is is better than no fans. Um, yeah. But it was a small. I think it was a small number. Mm. I do enjoy that racetrack just from a historical perspective. That's a fun one. So, it's a great place. Um, all right. Well, I'm going to, I think, hit the music here. And oh, man. We, Bucky's bound here in a little bit. He's Bucky's put bound. Some pants on. I've been pantsless. Uh, At least underwear? I have pants on. Okay. Good. Good. I mean, that's fine. You know, you do. On. You do. You do. pants. Yeah. Oh, man. Got a meeting about uh, championship media yeah. day. Well, I'm going to have to put pants on before I go out. Oh, sweatpants yeah. or foot pants? What did you say? Sweat I said I have to put pants on before I go out. I can't. I, to Bucky's, I can't wear shorts to Bucky's. and freezing. It's freezing. I mean, it depends on yeah. how cold you get. Cause some people just uh, throw on shorts and flip flops <laughs> in the winter. Yeah, north northwesterners. Yeah, <laughs> they're weirds. They're weirds. Wisconsin people, yeah, they wear shorts and flip flops in ten degree weather. Cause they crazy. And you would be crazy if you didn't like and subscribe uh, to this podcast in and rate and review. Rate and review in iTunes. Go find us wherever podcasts are found, um, and do all that stuff. Chat it up on Facebook. Tweet us stuff. We see the tweets. We read them. We like them. We do. Uh, but yeah, and tune in to the last two and two thirds races a year to see how Texas That's plays crazy. out. You know what's the crazy? Get Texas. Get it, we still have three races to go, but because this one's delayed, it's weird to say the championship race is next week. Isn't that weird? It's very it is weird. next week. It's very yeah. Weird. yeah. Technically, it's next week. That ah. is crazy. Crazy. Oh, shot caller. She got to control. Oh, Boom. yeah. He's being good. I don't know how to use it. She's a oh. shock caller.
20 inch the, uh, He did spill my place. coffee this morning. It wasn't his fault. I was bouncing the ball with him and he, instead of catching it, like hit it and it ricocheted, which I should have known. It's There's been close calls before, but it ricocheted perfectly into my coffee cup and then spilled the entire cup everywhere. Full cup. Dogs. 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 We end on dogs. Thank you guys for listening. Bye-bye. Bye.